Welcome to Model Steam Engine Live Steam Test Part 12, featuring a Cheddar Models Paddle Steamer Plant, a very old vertical engine steam toy, a large horizontal steam engine and a Stuart Sirius Firefly Plant steam engine. I'll start off with clips taken from a series I made called Refitting a Radio Controlled Glasgow Paddle Steamer. In the first part of this episode I'm going to change the gas jet. I'm going to change the number 5 jet for a number 8 jet which is a bit bigger and see what the difference is. With the gas jet holder clamped in a pair of pliers I just use my barco spanner to slacken it off and then it unscrews quite easily. I bought these new jets from a company called Clevedon Steam and I bought them via the Clevedon Steam eBay shop and as you can see here is a number 8 jet fitted all ready to go. In this clip I'm fitting the other end of the pipe to the tap on the gas tank. And now the exciting part, I'm lighting the chimney. And look what happens. The gas is burning quite nicely outside the chimney which is no good at all. So a number 8 gas jet is too big for this job. Back to the drawing board and I refit the number 5. This time when I light the gas at the top of the chimney it flashes straight down to the burner head. So it's a number 5 gas jet for this burner. In no time at all, steam is raised in the boiler and everything's fine. No bad smell at the chimney, no carbon monoxide detector going off. And here is the boiler fitted into the bolt using the original screw holes in the wood. I've put the pipe in place and connected it to the gas tank so it's all ready to go. Although you can't see from this clip, there's about £15 per square inch on the gauge. So I'm moving the servo back and forth that's between forward and reverse, to let some of this steam into the engine to warm it up and get rid of the water. Because the first steam to go into the engine immediately condenses to quite a lot of water, so really I'm just pumping it out into the condenser oil trap. It takes a few moments for all the water to clear, but eventually the engine runs quite smoothly.
now I've turned the gas off. As you can see, there's no longer a flame in the boiler. And this is the gas tank adapter on the other end of the pipe. You must always remove the gas tank adapters when you finish a run. As you can see in this clip, there's nothing really showing on the gauge, but the engine's still quite happy to run. This is a lovely engine. This engine was originally part of a portable World War II generating set, and I wish I had the rest of the set. Now that the steam run's finished, I'm using compressed air to blow through the engine to get rid of any water in there. And this is essential when you're using a cast iron engine. Cast iron and water equals rust where you don't want it. I'm also flushing the engine through using some WD-40. I squirt it into the tube and then put some more air through the engine. And finally, I pump some steam oil into the pipe and blow that through the engine. And you must always do this when you finish steaming a cast iron engine. I know this video is about steam testing a model boiler, but it's also been a very good excuse to play with my Stuart Sirius. But that's it for this one now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists. And by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.